All right, welcome out to the training webinar tonight. Um, I'm Shade Ferre with uh, with Taxel Support. I think uh, Stephen Swenson's here as well. Yep, I'm here. Excited to be here. Excellent. We are uh, conducting a a, a tax sell webinar tonight about online tax sell investing uh, and uh, and other forms of uh, of tax sell investing. Uh, and yeah, we're happy to have everybody join us here tonight. As we mentioned before, you're free to ask questions here throughout the event, uh, and we uh, we try to ask uh, answer them whenever it works out best. Uh, so uh, the first thing we should probably talk about is just a brief overview about who we are. Uh, chances are you probably came in contact with us through maybe YouTube, I would guess. It seems like that's where we've had a lot of contact, but we've worked with uh, thousands of, of people across the United States over the years, uh, tens of thousands. And so uh, we also have a lot of people we've worked with in the past that uh, oftentimes end up coming back. Um, the history on us, I guess, um, if I were to give a quick 30 second uh, speech here on it, um, Steve and I are cousins. We got involved with tax sales uh, about, it's probably coming up on 20 years ago, uh, was one of the first we first started getting involved with it. And um, it was at a different time. It was right as the internet was uh, was changing things about tax sale investing and uh, and uh, we basically were self-taught in doing it, uh, was the, uh, the short end of the story there. There was a lot more to it than that, but uh, we were self-taught with it and, uh, and ended up creating training. Uh, eventually, we uh, we ended up providing to seminar companies, but now we're kind of uh, the anti-seminar company, you know, in a way, I guess you could say. Uh, at least that's sort of how we feel about it, and that's because we we talk to people every day. We know how much money people have spent with seminars, and we know how it works inside and out. And uh, it's just been a belief of ours that we could offer so much more for so much less. That it didn't have to cost a lot. That we wanted people to be able to make money rather than spending it all on their training, you know, or, uh, or, you know, the idea of, of being able to make money. Yeah, yeah, you know, for the last decade or so, what me and Shay did is we essentially provided uh, tax sale education programs and books and things like that to a lot of the largest real estate training companies in the country. So we worked with big names that many of you people would recognize. Um, and we were, what we really did were we were the behind the scenes guys. We were their tax land indeed guys and we created their programs and, and private labeled our programs uh, for these different companies and then also taught their students. students. And so uh, we did that for about a decade. Uh, uh, and so we taught, you know, over the last decade, uh, 15, 20 years or so, you know, we've pro taught over 60,000 different investors from uh, the United States and, and, and abroad as well, the strategies of tax lien and deed investing. So uh, essentially, um, you know, what we decided to do was just to really bring this training or kind of go directly to the public and just uh, kind of discontinue working with the seminar companies and just work directly with uh, the investors and the students that we've done. We've helped, um, you know, hundreds and hundreds of students and have different stacks of different success stories, but we're always looking to create new success stories. In fact, every week uh, we're creating new success stories on deals we're working with new students. Yeah, and by the way, the other picture, uh, Mark Blair, he is the portfolio manager that, uh, that we work with on secondary liens, which is something that we'll, uh, we'll be able to get into more uh, in a little bit as we, uh, as we dive into, uh, into tax sales. But yeah, I think Steve explained it pretty well. Um, yeah, we have, we've, we've been teaching people for a long time. We've been involved with tax sales for, uh, for a long time, and uh, we still enjoy teaching it. We love, uh, uh, and we think that we have the best systems for doing so. We think that we have the best ways, the, si uh, the simplest and easiest ways to learn how tax sale investing works because it's a somewhat complex topic to approach uh, if you don't have some, some basic fundamental understanding of things. Yeah, definitely. And, and that's the great thing about tax liens or any type of tax sale investment, even as we get into deeds, is that once you understand the strategies, once you understand what you need to do, the steps you need to go through to, to make a successful investment, this is something that you can repeat the process over and over again. And it really becomes a way that we can you know, take our own finances, our own retirement accounts, whatever it is you're looking to do in your own hand to be able to go out there and start building a, a 
residual income, a, a um, lump sums of incomes, different types of investments, you know, depending on your investment strategy. Yeah. I think the reality is you don't need to turn your money over to somebody else to make money. In fact, the best way to make money is to leave it in your own hands, which are always going to be the best. And, uh, and, and you, can, you can use tax liens and tax deeds to make money the way the very few investments can. And they provide uh, incredible levels of security and profit. You know, if we were to just give a couple of statements about tax liens and deeds, uh, tax liens are the easiest and safest way to earn 10% plus. Uh, that, that is just a fact. That is exactly how they work. Um, they, uh, when it comes to tax liens, I guess, um, I'm past the, the point of, of, uh, of whether or not they, we know they work, uh, you know, and that's essentially what you can earn on a minimum. You know, 10% is easy to do with, uh, with, uh, with tax liens, and when you earn that, you're doing so with your investment secured by real estate. It's incredibly secure. So, um, you know that. Is, and if you think about it, I don't know how many different ways you know of to make 10% plus a year, uh, but if they are safe, then you should invest in them, because I'm not aware of any other way that people can consistently make 10% plus uh, safely. You know, through uh, through interest rate returns, and you can actually earn quite a bit more than that if uh, if you throw a little bit of property acquisition in the mix there. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about double digit returns here. So when we're talking about tax liens, we're talking about a double digit return that's secured by real estate. Uh, and so you know, some people don't understand how that happens, and that's kind of what we're going to explain tonight. Yeah, another statement: uh, tax deeds, the cheapest way to buy real estate. Period. You know, there is no cheaper way to buy real estate. We can guarantee that. Um, you know, in the beginning, getting involved with tax sales, and before we, you know, I think before uh, I really fully grasped, you know, what they were, um, I didn't realize just how special they really are. But when you start to look at different types of real estate investing, you realize that the tax sale investing has all of the best parts uh, of of different types of creative real estate. Um, they are the absolute cheapest way to buy property though. You know, there's not an easier way to buy property and we can guarantee that. Yeah, I mean, when we're, we're, we're looking at property here, we're targeting on properties that we can pick up between, you know, 10 to 50 cents on the dollar. So when you're talking about acquiring real estate for 10 to 50 cents on the dollar, you know, you're talking about the opportunity and the ability to make profit. You know, picking up one of those properties and uh, renting it out and having an immediate residual income or, or flipping the property for a lump sum, uh, you know, and, and taking that money and reinvesting. Uh, you know, really that, that gives us the flexibility with tax liens and tax deeds to either acquire property immediately or earn interest rate returns with the option or the ability to acquire property. Yeah. I think um, really the uh, the way that you can earn returns on it is uh, it's pretty incredible compared to uh, to any other investment. And the more you learn about it, the better you see that the opportunities are. And what we want to be able to show you tonight is why that's the case. We already know that this is the cheapest way to buy real estate. Period. In fact, I think this is probably one of the best real estate opportunities to come around in a long time. Um, and it, what I'm talking about there is um, tax sale investing in general right now and uh, and what's happening with it. I think it is one of those things where um, it is getting easier and easier and it's easy to make money now and they're only making it easier now you know, to, uh, to buy things. Everything about the system is becoming simpler and so it's a great time to get involved. Uh, but if you want to have success with tax sales, you need to have a good fundamental understanding of terms. You need to understand how different things work. And one of those things that's important to understand is uh, the county government systems, you know, local government versus national government. You need to understand state laws versus federal laws. Just understanding a couple of differences, uh, a couple of things here will make everything else make sense. One of the things we want to talk about is property tax basics, um, which uh, we want to basically explain where property taxes come from because to understand that is also to understand why different states do the things the way they do. And it also explains why tax liens have always been so difficult um, for people to understand why this is not 
something that was so popular, you know, that everybody was doing uh, you know, besides the banks and, and uh, select people in communities. So th the reason for that is it's in state laws uh, that, you know, you'll find the, uh, uh, the power is given to local governments uh, to uh, tax people and their personal income and property. You know, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's written into, uh, into the laws uh, both nationally and, uh, and on a statewide level. So every state has their own set of laws that give the, uh, the local governments the power to, uh, to do that and give the government the power to collect those taxes. Now, the same laws that determine you know, and give the government the power also determine what enforcement measures can be taken. Okay? So we're talking about things uh, from a state-to-state -state basis. And what that means is that you can have two states right next to each other that can have um, very different ways of dealing with delinquent property taxes. And that's part of the reason why there was always so much confusion about tax sales is because you essentially have 50 different ways of doing things uh, and they're all slightly different. Okay? Uh, what we wanted to do was to try to simplify things so you would understand them better. Okay? Uh, and so that was part of the reason uh, why we, we came up with a more of a simplified system here to, uh, to explain things and, and how they work. Um, so let's talk for a second um, about local governments. Um, if you want, Steve, go ahead and if you want, you can ex explain local governments to them and, and how that works. Yeah, no problem. I mean, essentially, when we're talking about local governments, we're particularly talking, usually it's going to be on a county government level where we're talking about property taxes. And the reason is, is most people will pay their property taxes to the county government. Now there's a couple of places like New Jersey where they pay it to, to maybe a city or a township. And there's, so there is exceptions, but 90%, 99% of, of most uh, places in the United States are going to pay property owners to the county. Now, what the county does is the county provides all of the local services. So, in, you know, in fact, it really, as you start going through them, these are things that some of us take for granted or, or don't think about. Things like schools, uh, the fire, the police, all of the road work, county services, snow plows, all of those different things that could be used within a particular county are usually going to be paid for uh, majority by the county government. So it's really the property taxes that go to pay for all of these services that we use throughout the county. So you can see that if if suddenly the county didn't have the money they needed to be able to pay these services, how this could cause a problem for not only the county, uh, um, but also in turn could hurt the these local services. It could hurt teachers and police departments and uh, you know uh, firefighters and things like that. Because if the county doesn't have the money, uh, then they don't have the money to pay all of these different services and the employees in the county employees that work within that particular area. Yeah. In fact, it can cause uh, major problems. I think when they don't have the property taxes paid. If they're short on money, uh, you know, in other words, if they collect less than what they're anticipating or what they, you know, what they intend to collect, uh, then they have to borrow that because they have regular outgoing expenditures. You know, and when they have to borrow that money, they're paying a lot to do that, and it ends up causing property taxes to go up dramatically. And so you, they have to have some enforcement measure in place. And I think that the reality of it is, if we didn't have enforcement measures in place, people wouldn't pay their property taxes because ultimately we, we do it because there are enforcement measures that are in place. We, you know, that's kind of what it being a law is all about, is, is it means that they're able to uh, tell you to do it and there are enforcement measures in place that basically uh, don't allow you to, uh, to, to resist. So um, another thing that we need to understand here is, is how the how the county comes up with what a property owner owes in delinquent taxes. Now this is important because as you're looking through different tax sale lists, you're going to be looking at, a, um, well, we'll talk about that in just a second here, I guess before I go too deep into it. Um, property tax bills are fairly simple, okay? They're going to go off your property's assessed value, so the county has somebody that's going to tell you what your property's uh, estimated value is, okay? A county assessed value. And they do that so that everybody's taxed fairly. Um, the other number that matters is the, is the property tax rate for that year in the county. So if you've ever owned real estate, this is basic stuff for you. You know you know how this works. Your property tax rate, 
Um, <laughs> you know, we were talking to somebody that lived up in New Jersey, and they said their property tax rate was crazy. How much did they say it was, Steve? Like three point nine per, or percent, or, or something crazy? Yeah, it was, it, it was yeah, incredibly it was, high. Yeah, it was way higher than any property tax rate that I've ever, you know, that uh, that I'd heard yet. But I guess you know, different places uh, have different costs of living. But yeah, if you have a property tax rate over four percent, let us know. You know, I'd be interested. I'd just be interested to track, you know, what people are paying here uh, nationally. But yeah, the property tax rate is based on what the county needs to collect. So they know what the overall value of all of the real estate is in the in the, uh, in the county. So once they know how much money they need to collect, they come up with their property tax rate. Uh, you know, so that property tax rate is dependent upon what they believe they're going to collect, and that's how you come up with that bill amount. Um, the reason why this is important, though, um, is because it shows you that your property tax bill or the amount that you owe in taxes every year, in a way, is a reflection of what your property's value, uh, you know, what your property's overall value is. Now, that's important because um, it's a shortcut for you know, looking at things, you know, it enables you to look at uh, at properties based on value and get some kind of an idea of what the value is on the property without actually looking up information on it or being able to spot it. Um, so, yeah, essentially. We're talking about enforcement systems um, that are in place and how the what kind of I guess what kind of authority the laws give the government when it comes to uh, enforcing this. Um, and when Steve and I created this program, we broke it up into what we could see were three different distinct systems, uh, and those are tax liens tax deeds and redemption deeds. What we mean by that is that every state in the country uses at least one of these, okay? And most of most states use just one system. So they're, they're either a tax lien state or a tax deed state uh, or a redemption deed state. But what we're finding more and more is that um, uh, we're seeing more states, I guess, they're adding additional types of sales and things. We're seeing states be a little bit more flexible. It's actually been kind of interesting. We've seen states, be, uh, we've seen governments, county governments become um, better, I think, at managing counties and uh, and at uh, running their tax sales. But first, yeah, well, I think yeah. they've become, you know, more flexible, but they've also become more creative, you know, because they need to, they need to sell some of these properties to get current properties on their owners and they're paying the, the delinquent taxes and so a lot of these counties have been more motivated or more creative uh, to find ways to be able to sell these taxing certificates and essentially make them available or tax deed properties uh, to investors so that they can put new property owners in those properties. Oh yeah, I mean if, if you think about it, we are really at an interesting point in time right now because the internet has changed so many different aspects of our lives that it's almost changed things faster than uh, than ideas keep up with. Uh, and real estate investing is one of those things that has been dramatically changed by by the internet. In fact, it's been changed in so many ways you know, by the internet and tax sale investing is just further down the line as far as being incredibly affected, but the ability to perform online record search, uh, the ability to participate in online auctions, the research you can do, just something as simple as Google Earth, you know, years ago it was crazy, you know, just a crazy idea to us how easy it would have made certain things. So uh, it is just getting, uh, you know, it's getting easier to do with a lot of these, uh, these modern tools. And counties are figuring out that it's easier for them to do these things. And if they, they with a little bit of effort, uh, they can make a lot of money. They can sell a lot of their inventory. They can get, their whole purpose is to keep that tax revenue coming in. You know that's what the county needs. You know that's what they want to do, and so uh, we're just seeing that counties are uh, are taking advantage of the uh, the opportunities they see in front of them. So when when we're talking about tax lien states uh, and the county places lien against the property, what exactly is that lien? Um, you know, a lien is a type of legal claim that can be placed against real estate. Uh, and basically, it's placed against real estate because of a, a debt that's owed, like a delinquent uh, tax bill. The purpose of the lien, though, and the power of the lien is that it prevents the transfer of ownership, so the owner can't sell the property until they take care of this delinquent amount, which is typically the amount that the lien is for. So 
Um, each lien has a redemption period with it as well, which means that uh, the lien can eventually be used to foreclose on the property if the amount's not eventually paid. So uh, the liens have an incredible amount of power. You know, they, uh, but ultimately, the purpose, I think, in the county creating them is, is, uh, is so that they'll have something to sell. So if you want, Steve, um, let's talk to them a little bit about uh, essentially what happens here when somebody shows up at a tax sale and, uh, and or I guess when, in, uh, when I, let me just move on here. Let's talk for a second here about what happens, you know, when, uh, when somebody shows up for the tax sale and, uh, and uh, to invest and what, they're, what they can expect and why they would show up there to invest. Okay, okay, so um, you're talking about a, a live auction or just yeah. an online auction? Just in general, just okay. in general with tax well, sales. You know, when, when you attend an auction or even participate in an online auction, it's, it's, it's very similar to any other type of auction that you participated in. So if, if anyone's been on eBay or did any type of auctions, then you at least have some type of idea of how to, to participate in a tax sale. In fact, if you can... can if you can compete in an eBay auction, you can compete in a tax lien or, uh, or tax deed online auction. It's very similar. It's gonna, you're going to go through the kind of the same process. It's just really evaluating those individual properties. And so, uh, you know, when you attend that tax sale, there's going to be a lot of different opportunities. But essentially, they are going to be offering a, a batch, or they're going to be offering the properties, the tax and certificates that are essentially available, uh, you know, for that particular tax sell. Yeah, so you're, you're basically buying out the liens that have been placed against all the properties that have delinquent taxes. Um, and when you pay the county for that lien, the amount of the lien will be the amount that's owed in taxes. It basically gives the county the cash that they need immediately to operate. And so it, it's a good system for them, but that's their primary purpose in creating the lien. Uh, however, for investors, they buy liens for the high interest rate returns generally because the system is set up like this because I think that most people would agree that just because you're late on your property taxes doesn't mean that you're going to never pay your property taxes. Uh, it's just like anything else that you might be late with uh, and pay late. I think people pay a lot of bills late all the time and taxes are no different. Um, but the idea is this is a solution that allows the county to collect the money now and also lets the owner of the property not lose the property for a while. Okay, so it, uh, it's a system that I think does the, the, uh, the best for both individuals and it creates this opportunity for an investor. And that is when they sell that lien, it, it, it's set to pay out an interest rate return annually. Uh, that rate can range from uh, what, 10 to 24%, 26%, uh, depending on, uh, on where, you, uh, where you are looking at. So it pays a good annual interest rate return. And that means, by the way, a rate that accrues monthly. So 18% annually would be 1.5% per month is what it's accruing at. And it has that redemption period, um, which is a fail safe. It's basically a last resort for the investor, but it's also what gives them all the security on their investment. Yeah, I mean, when we're looking at taxing certificates, we're essentially paying off their that property owner's delinquent taxes, and and what that tax lien does is it guarantees us that interest rate return. So when we're looking at you know purchasing a tax lien certificate, you could purchase a thousand dollar tax lien certificate this evening that could be against a property that's worth fifty or a hundred thousand dollars. So you know that property is acting as collateral for your loan for your investment, but that lien also has two has you know there's two possible outcomes there's two things that can happen when you purchase a tax and certificate yeah let's see here the first one is the most obvious one and the one that happens almost all of the time that is redemption at some point the property owner is going to pay off the taxes okay and when they do that the lien is removed from the property and uh, a check is mailed out to the investor for their initial investment plus the interest rate that they accrued up to that point. Okay, so 
uh, again, that's what happens the vast majority of the time. In fact, it's pretty rare for people to lose uh, their property because of delinquent property taxes, but that can happen if it doesn't redeem within that redemption period. So if it's a two-year redemption period, you wait out that time period, and if it doesn't occur, then you can initiate that foreclosure process uh, with the power of the lien. And oftentimes, when you start that process of foreclosing, that's when it gets serious for people, and that's when they suddenly will step up and pay off the amount oftentimes. So just because it goes past the redemption period also doesn't mean that it's not going to redeem. They oftentimes do redeem, but if it doesn't, uh, and that after that foreclosure notice has gone out, the property will be foreclosed on. And the essentially, you're either going to get your interest rate return, you know, your, your money back plus your interest rate return, or you're going to uh, have the chance to acquire the property. It'll be one or the other. Yeah, I mean, that that's the reason tax lien investing, you know, I think you can make a case that tax lien investing is the best investment ever. Because, you know, not only are you guaranteed a high interest rate return, but you have the chance to acquire the property. Uh, you know, so literally is, is our investment not only backed up by state law, it's backed up by 50 or 100 years worth of history, but it's also backed up by the property itself. So only two things can happen. Either you're going to get your money back or you're going to foreclose on, and take the property. So as long as we're purchasing tax and certificates on good, valuable property, then our investment is always going to be a safe, good investment. Uh, you know, here are two different examples of, of some tax and certificates that were, that were purchased in uh, Colorado and went through the foreclosure process. So these were tax liens that were purchased. They waited that redemption period. So every tax and certificate is going to have a time frame uh, where that property owner has, where that property owner can pay back the tax lien, pay back the, the loan, uh, the debt. So that can range from one year to three years. Uh, there can go farther than that in a few states, but usually it's between about one to three years. Uh, and so once that tax lien certificate owner, uh, that tax lien investor purchases that tax lien at the auction, then that redemption period is going to start. And so once that redemption period is in, these are two properties that were picked up through uh, tax and certificates. And so we can see this, you know, this first property has an assessed value of, uh, of 174, uh, has a Zillow value of about 259, and it was picked up for $7,774 worth in delinquent taxes. So what that probably is, is a couple of years worth of delinquent taxes. So it's more than one tax lien. Somebody purchased one tax lien and then uh, they were delinquent on the next year. And so essentially this, this tax lien holder was able to acquire this property for essentially $7,774. Uh, we can see the property down below is, is, is even, you know, uh, you know, was purchased for $16,000 and has a Zillow value of market value of about 338. And so these are, you know, two examples of properties that were able to be acquired through purchasing a tax lien certificate. Now, all of the properties, you know, that, that didn't get to this point, the the lien holders made back their interest and their money. So that was still a great investment. These these are just two examples of uh, tax liens that went all the way through the foreclosure process, where you can see that these people, both of these investors, picked up these properties literally for pennies on the dollar. Yeah, I don't think you'll find um, better deals than this. And yeah, the other side of that is like Steve said, the rest of the investors earned back their initial investment plus they earned a good high interest rate return. It was a really safe investment. That's what's crazy about liens is you can oftentimes have what is such a small amount compared to the property value, uh, but that lien, even though it is a small amount, has a tremendous amount of power. You know, They have crazy power where a small lien can be used to foreclose on a nice, you know, valuable property, uh, but that's because liens are first position, especially these types of liens. They are, uh, they are a first position lien, meaning they take priority or precedence over anything, including even a mortgage. So if there was a mortgage on, on one of these properties, let's say, when the county began to foreclose on the property, one of the first things that happens is foreclosure notices go out to all of the owners of the property. That would include mortgage companies if there are any and what would generally happen if your mortgage company got a notice in the mail saying that your house is about to be foreclosed on because of delinquent property taxes they'd probably step in and do something 
because they need to protect their interest in that property, they have borrowed, you know, they're the lender in the situation, uh, but they've had that property as security or as collateral there for the, uh, the loan. And so that's really what's securing it and making it a safe investment for them. Uh, so they need to protect their side of it. They'll oftentimes pay it off. But if they didn't, then that's the power of, of that lien is it would wipe out. It would basically, uh, it would, the loan itself would no longer be attached to the property. It would still exist between the borrower and the lender, but they would no longer have that property as collateral because they would have lost it to foreclosure if that were the case. But that's why it doesn't normally happen with uh, with properties that have a mortgage or something like that. Uh, in fact, you know, the majority of the time, like I said, they, they usually redeem. But these are all, these are some awesome examples here. Yeah, you know, and so, Essentially, when we're looking at, at tax and certificates, it's, it's really one of the safest investments because 95% of the time, you're going to make back your money in your interest rate return. So usually only about 5% of tax liens end up going all the way to through foreclosure where you actually acquire the property. So most of the time, you're just going to make get back a check in the mail, and then you just continue reinvesting that into tax lien certificates so that you're always making a high interest rate return. But then, of course, if you have one of these properties that gets to the point of foreclosure, then you can go ahead and foreclose on the property and, and acquire a property really for just anywhere between 3 to 15 or 20 percent of its value uh, and it really pick up an incredible deal. Yeah, yeah, there, uh, there really is. Uh, there's no cheaper way um, to get into real estate than, uh, than through tax sales. And what's interesting is that those were just the tax liens that we're talking about. You know, that's when people are generally investing uh, to earn high interest rate returns, and that's just the chance they have to acquire property. If you're interested in, in property, all of the red states you see here utilize a tax deed system, uh, which is a little bit different, but if you're into property, then that's essentially what you're looking at. Yeah, and one thing that's made, made so much of a difference from when me and Shade first got started, you know, we first got started really in the in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, starting researching tax sales, and, and the process was completely different. Now with the internet, you don't necessarily have to live in uh, the state that you'd like to invest. In fact, most of our investors are investing outside of their own state. I would say probably 80, 90 percent of the investors that we work with are investing outside of their own state that they live in. And, and what's made that possible is the internet. You know, now with the internet, you have the ability to, to do all of the research that used to take years. Yeah, it was far more difficult, you know, uh, even 15 years ago uh, to invest outside of your own area um, than it is today. You know, that is something that is just getting easier and easier. Um, but these tax deed states, when we're looking at all of those red states, tax deed states, the system is slightly different. Um, what the state laws do is they give the county the power to foreclose on properties that are delinquent with property taxes once they get past a certain redemption period. So in the state laws for tax deed states, they basically set uh, what the redemption period is going to be and then what the procedures will be to foreclose on those properties and how they go about doing that. So uh, they, the counties in, uh, in these states, uh, some of them create kind of a lien that they keep on record for themselves, some of them don't. Um, but the main point is they don't really hold sales unless they are tax deed sales. And um, what this means is that once they have the properties that have, uh, that have gone through the foreclosure process, they will then uh, offer them uh, to uh, for sale for the opening bid. And the opening bid amount is what's owed in taxes, penalties, and fees. So as long as it gets a minimum bid, they're getting their money out of it. Uh, they mostly just want to get, you know, sell it off to a new property owner so that they can have somebody that will start collecting the property taxes. I mean, they will yeah. start uh, uh, paying property taxes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, really, what what a tax deed is is just instead of like a tax lien state where they create these liens, the county just sits back, and so they'll just sit back for two to four years, five years, and then the county just forecloses on the property and offers it up at auction. So the opening bid's going to start at, just like Shade said, just the delinquent taxes, so just the back taxes. So if we're looking at a property that was delinquent for three or four years, 
uh, that may be, you know, let's say it was a thousand dollars a year in property taxes, it may be three or four or five grand for that opening bid will start. That means that you could acquire the property for that opening bid amount depending on how the auction goes. And so that's the advantage of tax deeds is, is you're, you know, getting the chance to bid on these properties at really a low a low bid amount, a low starting bid. And so what that enables us to do is to usually be able to have the ability to create larger profits because we're picking up a property for 10 to 50 percent on the dollar versus buying a property for 90 or a or dollar, you know, a dollar on the dollar. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about it and I think that tax deeds are real foreclosures versus um, bank foreclosures, which in a way are not really real foreclosures. Um, you know, when we think about foreclosures, we are all, you know, we think about, uh, you know, the idea of the bank foreclosure. You know, I think that's what most people think about. But the reality of it is um, the bank foreclosure is just the bank's own personal kind of foreclosure. It's like a company foreclosure, okay? And, and, and lenders are able to do that because when you, when you sign your mortgage contract, you basically sign away your rights to uh, a, a a true foreclosure. Okay, that's because the lender wants to be able to do it quickly. Okay, so that's why they have you sign that that uh, that right away. Uh, these properties are properties that have actually been through a real foreclosure through the courts. Okay, so uh, these properties have actually gone through a process that wipes out and extinguishes anything that's attached to them, so that they can be sold and transferred over to a new owner. Okay, that's a, a total. That, that's a real benefit for you as an investor because it means that these are not going to have anything attached to them uh, like they would if you were to buy them uh, like let's say at a bank foreclosure that would be before any actual kind of, uh, of foreclosure had ever taken place so you would still be liable for whatever was attached to the property um, you know in uh, in this case you wouldn't be because of the power of that uh, that foreclosure so these are like real foreclosures compared to uh, you know, compared to something like bank foreclosures, the other side of it is that you can get you can get these types of properties cheaper than you would ever be able to get them from a bank foreclosure. And the reason why is because when the bank is selling a property at one of their foreclosure sales, they may offer a discount on it, but it's still money out of their pocket if they sell it for less. So they're going to sell it for as much as they can. When a county sells a property, the opening bid amount is what's owed in delinquent taxes and fees. Beyond that, they don't care what it sells for. Okay, so it's the only type of sale you'll find where the owner of the property at the time has no personal interest in what it sells for. As long as they get that opening bid amount, they don't care what it sells for, and that's why you'll you'll find better deals at tax sales than uh, in I guess with any other type of investing. And it doesn't even have to be at the sale either. Uh, you know, there are other ways that you can buy, which you know, we're, we're going to talk about here in a minute, but I think these are a couple of examples, Steve, if you want to tell them about some of these examples. Yeah, in fact, uh, I just noticed as, as I pulled this up, as you pulled this up, that, that Florida tax deed on the right didn't uh, wasn't acquired for 10000 It was actually acquired for just over 3000 I was looking for a property that was a single-family home that was picked up for 3000 at a tax deed sale in the last couple of months, and this is one of the properties that I found. So the winning bid I have listed there, I sent it to you wrong. But that property there was picked up in the last couple of months through a tax deed auction in Florida, uh, for about three thousand dollars, and and the price is right. It's, it has a value of about fifty-two thousand. So uh, you know when you're looking at at that type of uh, you know acquiring a property for thirty-five hundred bucks, three grand, uh, you know that has a property value of fifty. You're looking at overall good investment. This property here on the left was just a Washington property in the uh, state of Washington in a tax deed sale uh, that just took place a week or two ago. And so what this is is it's a you know, a almost about a half acre building lot in a really nice area of, of Washington State. Uh, has a market value. This is a low market value because um, I just kind of really almost looked at the assessed value. I didn't do a comparable on it. From what I could see, it had a market value of quite a bit higher, about 60000 And it was picked up for, you know, just over $3,000 at the tax sale. And the property up in the left-hand corner is one that's coming up to auction next month. 
uh, has an opening bid of 6000 and sells for 122 Now, every auction is going to be a little bit different and every property is going to be a little bit different. Sometimes you'll have that one property where two investors both want to have it and they'll pay more than they should. But for us as tax sale investors, when we're bidding on properties, we're generally trying to get these properties for 10 to 50 cents on the dollar. Uh, usually if the property goes above that, then we're willing to let it go because there's so many different opportunities taking place. Now, it, you know, just some of the numbers here have, have got to have some people amazed. I mean, if you're talking about legitimately buying homes for like $6,000, okay, and it having a market value of 122000 I also want everybody to think about something, and that is rent. Rent prices uh, are something that have gone up everywhere, and they have gone up in some areas much faster than real estate prices have gone up. Or when real estate prices take a plunge, rent prices still stay high. And so rent prices are something that uh, are uh, quite high and it's an easy way to bring in residual income on, on a property. Now most of the time when people think about long-term real estate, the problem they have with it is uh, they don't want to be a landlord or something like that. Um, but when you buy a property for $6,000, uh, that is close to being rentable like this, uh, just think about that. That property probably rents out, I don't know if we were to guess here, it probably said on, the, on, the, uh, on, on Zillow, but I would guess that it would rent out for uh, at least at least 1000 bucks a month, probably 900 to $1,000 a month. Yeah, well, this is in California, so it was more like 1500 or so. Yeah, okay, so $6,000 is what is paid for and it has the capacity to rent out for more I mean that's that's amazing if you think about it there's an investment that could potentially pay itself off in less than six months with just the rent okay and then from there yeah you own the property yeah yeah you know in the in the property in the right hand corner and we have a lot of investors that look at Florida and focus on Florida because the rental market is such a good market you know this property here on the on the right was purchased for just three grand uh, you know, and it has a value of 5200 but the rental is probably anywhere between 800 to to $1,000 a month. So if you were to purchase this property for three grand, essentially put a renter in it paying 800 or $1,000 a month, within a matter of three or four months, uh, six months tops, this property is paying its, paid itself off, and essentially you have a cash flowing property that's giving you 800 or or $1,000 a month. Yeah, I, I think that it's, uh, it, it is... It's absolutely insane, you know, when you start to look at it. I mean, here are uh, here are a couple of uh, uh, here are a couple of other examples here of uh, those two in Florida. Yeah, just you know, sim similar. These are a couple other properties in Florida, uh, you know, purchased for ten thousand dollars and twenty thousand uh, dollars. I have a market about you know fifty and, and eighty five uh, respectively, and so. Uh, in each one of these properties, you could have a different strategy. You could turn around and flip it. Uh, you could turn around and sell it for top dollar, high profit. Or you could turn it into a, a rental or a seller finance type situation where you are acting like the bank. Uh, a lot of times, that's what a lot of these investors do with these tax deed properties is essentially seller finance them uh, to, some, to somebody who uh, essentially will go in there and, and wants to... to acquire the property, wants to buy the property, wants to sell or finance it. And and that allows us to be able to get a residual income off that property, but also that property owner can take care of any maintenance that's required. Uh, if not, then you can just rent that property out and be like Shay talked about, you don't have to worry about paying that mortgage payment. Uh, you'll It's easily affordable to be able to have a property management company handle your different ta your different properties in this area for you uh, and, and just take a small a bit of that rent coming in uh, so that you don't even have to worry about it. Now, how many, how many livable single family homes do you think we've seen sell at auction for less than $20,000? It's probably uh, in the thousands. Over yeah, the years. Probably, yeah, over the years it's probably in the thousands. I mean, uh, you can find these types of opportunities out there, and that's if you, that's only if you want to buy, uh, let's say, like something like single-family homes. There, there are all different types of real estate that you can buy. There's, there's, uh, there's great opportunities with land. There, uh, you know, if you're into commercial 
property, you can find commercial property uh, in, in a lot of these sales. Um, there is something to suit just about every specific niche uh, that you're looking for because everybody pays property taxes. You know, nobody gets away with it. Uh, you know, nobody can get away from it either. So uh, you're going to find every type of real estate, you know, in, uh, in involved with that, in the tax sale process. Yeah, I mean, land. You you bring up land. That's a great point. I mean, if if you really want as little hassle as possible, you want to just turn around and flip the property, sell it for a profit. You know, these tax deed land lots and, and large tracts of land is a great way uh, to do it because it's they're so it's so easy to sell online. You don't have to go in and make sure that the sheetrock is okay and the pipes work and the plumbing and the electricity and all that kind of stuff you just turn around and you're just selling a chunk of land it's just an investment that you're you bought it for this price and you're selling it for this price and you're essentially making the profit you're making the in-between yeah and you know the land that you're looking at is so cheap you know comparatively you know, to other real estate that you're looking at buying again it's the cheapest way to buy real estate and what's crazy about this is that you can start out at almost any money level that you want. It doesn't just cater to, oh, if you've got more than $10,000. If you don't have a lot of money to invest in, then there are lots of investments that start as low as, you know, a few hundred dollars if you wanted. You can work your way up. You know, you don't have to spend a ton. I mean, um, and it's better to get started and start buying something now so that you understand the process. You know, the first liens that, that we bought were not huge. You know, they were, they were tiny. Mine was a little $67 lien. But it was invaluable in terms of what it taught me about the process and and in what it uh, and I guess in some of the faith that it built in the fact that it worked. It was amazing. Oh, definitely. I mean, you can go out there and spend a couple of hundred. You know, this evening you could go out there and spend two hundred dollars and buy a tax lien certificate that's earning eighteen percent interest rate. That's on a property that's worth, uh, you know. 50 times the value of the tax lien. And, and, and then with tax deeds, I mean, just this last week, we had one of our students that we're working with that picked up a tax deed property. Uh, he purchased it for $1 uh, because the county was trying to get rid of these properties, and he purchased a great half-acre building lot for a $1, uh, but then he had $35 in fees. So it cost him $36. He acquired a property that he's going to be able to turn around and sell uh, they're locally for a couple of grand, but probably has a value of about about ten grand. So uh, you know, when you're looking at these different types of deals, that's what tax sale investing gives you. Is it gives you opportunities that you're not going to be able to get anywhere else. At least not that I know of. If there's an if there's a better strategy out there, man, we'll tell you about it. But I've never seen one. No, I I don't think you'll find anything. And I think it's really because of that. Uh, that fact that every other type of, of investment usually you have somebody that has a personal interest in the property. You know, I really think that that's what it comes down to. And for the county, that's something else that's pretty exciting that we're seeing about counties now is uh, the fact that they are choosing to move past some of their old thinking and they are uh, looking to create opportunities for investors. They just want to get people that are paying property taxes that own property. Okay, so they are not very good at marketing. That's something you need to realize about counties is that they have never been good at marketing. You know, back in the day before the internet came around, their tax sales, they, they had a terrible time trying to get people out to their tax sales usually because they would advertise it in, in the newspaper. You know, so they would get locals that, that might come out to the tax sale, but it wasn't something that they got out of state investors for because people weren't gonna travel to do it. And so, if they didn't get enough investors to their sales, what happened? They had to put everything back on the books. Maybe they'd try to do another sale and hope they could collect more. But over time, they end up with this huge, you know, over time, let's say, they've ended up with so many properties, they just cannot seem to, to get delinquent property taxes on. And, uh, and you know, now it seems like they're, uh, they're cleaning these places up. They're going to help property values increase. They're, uh, they're really forward thinking with what they're doing. And I think it's going to be... Uh, Exciting for the investors that are, you know, they're there to to, uh, to participate and to buy these properties from uh, from counties. Um, the the uh, the third system we have listed here are redemption deeds. So we talked about tax liens. We talked about about tax deeds. There are some states that use a system that uh, we call uh, redemption deeds. It is a hybrid 
of, uh, of both tax liens and tax deeds. Um, they are essentially tax deeds that are sold with a redemption period that is attached to them. Um, they, uh, in, in terms of, in other words, the, uh, the county will go through the foreclosure process and then will offer the property up for sale at auction. You could buy the property uh, there at auction, but once you buy the property, you wouldn't have the ability to necessarily turn around and sell it until a redemption period expires. So you can't actually transfer ownership uh, until the uh, until the redemption period on it has passed. Um, other key points on it, um, I don't know, what do you think, Steve? Penalty rates? Um, yeah, I mean, essentially what a redemption deed is, is the tax deed that has a redemption period attached to it. So that's, the, I think, sometimes the easiest way to look at it. Uh, in most redemption deed states, uh, you know, it's, it's just kind of form of a tax deed. You know, the county will actually issue a deed in your name, but they're not going to, uh, you know, process that deed until after that redemption period has expired. And so in looking at a state like Texas, for example, that's kind of one of the prime redemption deed states. And what makes the redemption deed state nice is that they offer a penalty, like Shade mentioned, versus an interest rate return. So instead, you know, in, in Georgia or, or Texas, a place like this, if you invest, let's say you spend $10,000 at the tax sale and the property owner pays off the next day, you're going to get that that full 25% return on your money. It's not going to be, you know, like a tax lien certificate that's going to be broken, that percentage rate is going to be broken up over annually. In a redemption deed state, that penalty is given all automatically. So when you go ahead and <clears throat> purchase that, you're going to get a full penalty versus versus that uh, versus that interest being spread out over a year. In addition, with that, some redemption deed states also have uh, give you property ownership. So, like Texas being that example, uh, like a tax deed, once you acquire that property, you could live in the property, you could rent the property out. You're going to have ownership to that property once that t tax sale has taken place. Uh, but that property owner has either six months, uh, in most cases, if, it, if it's less it's a homestead, then it would be two years, to pay you off the, essentially the investment. So when, when you're acquiring redemption deeds, you've got a lot higher chance of getting the property. And sometimes you'll have property ownership rights. It's just going to depend on the, the, the particular state that you're investing into. But that's yeah, essentially think, kind of how they work. Yeah, and uh, and there are uh, some investors I think you know that uh, that like them. Um, you know, I think there are advantages. You know, in some ways, I mean, each one of the investments offer different unique advantages. You know, and so you could make a case for any of them. You know, really, you could make a case for tax liens as far as being the way to go. You could make a case for tax deeds, uh, or you could make a case for redemption deeds. So what really it, it kind of comes down to is what you as the investor are after because uh, some of them may work better for helping you achieve your goals than, than others. Uh, and that kind of leads us into uh, a simplified way here of teaching as well in that whether you're looking at tax liens or deeds or redemption deeds, it, uh, uh, essentially there are four buying methods you know, in general in which you, know, you can participate and purchase um, either uh, either liens or deeds, and um, we've got those list, uh, listed here. You know, we've got them listed as uh, live auction, online auction, uh, over the counter, and secondary. Okay, so uh, what's interesting is that basically covers all of the different ways that you can essentially buy. You know, I, I don't think there's any other way that you can participate or buy uh, than uh, than through these four. Yeah, I mean. The only other thing you could possibly do a sealed bid, but in a way that's just a kind of a, a, a live auction or a, an online auction almost where you're just submitting a sealed bid and even that, that's only just a handful. So, you know, 99% of it's either going to be done through those four invested methods. Yeah, now, uh, the live auctions or, uh, you know, we're saying live county auctions here are the first method. Um, now they're the by far the oldest, most common method. Now, these are how tax sales have been conducted for decades. Okay, for long times, 
the counties have conducted these tax sales as auctions. Usually they're uh, in the, uh, well, if they've got a county courthouse, oftentimes it's there. If not, it's going to be in another type of county building. Uh, in fact, every state probably still has live sales that are conducted. I don't think anybody's fully converted over to, uh, to online no, auctions I yet. I don't think so either. I mean, really, you know, live auction is, is the job that Wyatt Earp, you know, back in the Wild West, that was one of his duties, was conduct, conducting the county foreclosures for tax sales. And so this is something that's been going on for literally hundreds of years. In fact, in uh, somewhere in one of our storage units, we've got old tax deeds that were purchased and, and even tax liens that were from the 20s and the 30s and, and the 40s. We collected some of those uh, from, from long ago. So this isn't something that's new. This is something that's been around for, for years and it's essentially the way that the county conducts the auction. Now, really what a live auction is, is you're just a attending the auction in person. You're going down to the county courthouse, you're bidding against other bidders, it's live, it's in person, and you're essentially uh, you know, participating in the sale. In fact, me and Shade always recommend if there's a live auction in your area uh, and you can attend, go out there and attend it, even if you don't plan on bidding or buying at the auction, just to sit back and watch the auction process. Yeah, there's so much you can learn by, uh, by doing that, and uh, it's always worth going. Uh, and it is still the most common uh, method of sale for these things still is is through live auctions. So online auctions are picking up a lot of steam, which are the, the next system that we're going to talk about, but live auctions are still plentiful. And I think they will be for a while. I mean, eventually, we think that things will mostly move over to online eventually, but it will take a while before that happens. And so I think you'll still continue to see uh, live, you know, in-person auctions for a long time. Yeah, and what makes these online auctions so nice is it just gives us the ability to participate in auctions that we otherwise wouldn't be able to do. We could participate in Colorado or Arizona or Florida or New Jersey or Indiana tax lien sales, Nebraska tax lien sales, Maryland tax lien sales, uh, you know, and all kinds of different tax deed sales just from our computer. We're able to bid on these properties, buy these properties, uh, you know, transfer most all the documents are all done online. So it makes it really convenient uh, for us as investors to purchase in different areas outside of our own our own uh, our own area where we live. Yeah, and essentially, what's happened is uh, there are different companies, third-party companies that specialize in online auctions, and they have partnered with many of these counties to begin offering the, uh, the properties available you know, online. And so uh, we have some of the auction companies listed here below that have partnered up with, with, uh, with the counties. And what tends to happen is you have, sometimes you'll have multiple auction companies working within the same state. Uh, sometimes you'll have an auction company that just that pretty well has the entire state. Uh, or if there are counties, they have all of the states within the county, uh, they have all the counties within the state that are using an online auction. Uh, so you'll find a variety, but yeah, those companies include Real Auction, Grand Street Group, um, SRI Auctions, Bid for Assets, and there are actually a lot of others, and they're growing all of the time because the online auction side of tax sales is constantly growing. In fact, we've watched it grow incredible amounts over the last 15 years. You know, we've watched the number of uh, tax sales, online auctions, probably double nearly uh, every year, you know, it seems like. So, um, you know, there are lots and there's still and lots great of opportunities. opportunities. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's still incredible opportunities. In fact, all of those tax deeds that we looked at underneath the tax deeds earlier, those property examples, every one of those was, was either acquired or that one that's coming up in an online tax deed sale. So, uh, you know, there's, there's going to be great opportunity as well uh, in different areas where you have the chance to, to participate in these online auctions. It also gives you the ability to continue investing in that area year after year uh, if the county will continue having sales in that area, which we know they will because every county has to have tax sales. Yeah, um, we also just wanted to do a quick check here, make sure, because uh, we had somebody tell us here just a second ago that they couldn't hear or they didn't have audio. Uh, we just want to make sure that everybody can hear that they're not having any kind of a problem. I don't know if it's just a case um, where just the, the one person is having a problem or if it's uh, 
it's with everybody. So if you could, if, if, if you can hear us okay and there's no problems, let us know if audio seems to be, if, if audio is broadcasting well for you and you can hear us right now, do us a favor and just go down to the chat section or the other uh, question section and, and, uh, and let us know. And uh, that way, oh, perfect. Okay, so it sounds like it's working perfect for uh, for most everybody for the most part. So we'll keep an eye out, see if we can help her. Um, yeah, one thing you can do, you can always just try logging out and logging back in. Sometimes that can fix the problem. Oh, good. Okay, awesome. Um, you know, in addition to online auctions, which are a great opportunity, and like Steve said, we still see lots of opportunity there. It's not like it's something where they're, uh, there's too much competition now. It's just not that way. There's also a tremendous opportunity with over-the-counter investing. In fact, in a way, this is kind of like the uh, the floodgates opening uh, as far as opportunities in tax sales. And that's because counties, many counties that offer these uh, these tax liens, uh, and some in some cases tax deeds, if they don't sell these properties at auction, then their options are to either offer them at another sale later down the road, but some counties will actually make them available so that people can purchase them right off of their books for the amount that's owed after the sale. This is known as over-the-counter investing. Uh, sometimes it's called assignment purchasing, or you'll see them referred to as county-held liens, or uh, there's so many different terms for it, uh, for over-the-counter. Um, but it essentially means purchasing uh, these liens or possibly deeds after the auction has occurred directly from the county, which gives you a couple of unique benefits. Um, one of which is that because you're purchasing it after the auction, you're not competing with anybody directly. The amount you pay is simply what's owed in delinquent taxes and fees. So that would be the equivalent of the opening bid amount in, uh, in most cases. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're talking about over the counters. You're, we're essentially buying these tax liens or these tax deeds directly from the county. So when we're looking at the tax deeds, instead of bidding up that price, we can just essentially pay the, the amount of the delinquent tax. And when we're looking at tax liens, this is where we can really get the highest interest rate returns in a lot of times because we're not competing against other bidders bidding down that interest rate return like you would in an auction. And, and there's a lot of reasons why these over-the-counters are going to be available too. It's, it's not because they're necessarily junk properties. Let's say that the county has $10 million worth of tax liens to sell, one of these big counties, and they only sell $5 million. That means that there's an additional $5 million worth of tax liens that are still available. Yeah, you know, we, uh, we actually have a really good question here. And, uh, you know, the question is, as is my question is, the online auction is, uh, is, is very uh, competitive. So if we do not have a lot of money to invest, is it hard for me to compete with, uh, with, the, with the big, I guess what, what they're wondering is, is it hard for me to compete with the, with the, uh, with the big investor, isn't it? Um, and so what I think I would say to that is if you, uh, if you have less money that you're working with, um, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be trying to go for the same properties, but what it may mean is that maybe the auction is, is not the best way to go about buying if, you know, if you've got a pretty limited amount of capital. And what I mean by that is there are lots and lots of opportunities that get passed up in tax sales for lower dollar amounts. In fact, a lot of the low dollar amount opportunities get passed up because they are cheaper and because there's more of it. Um, there are some great opportunities out there. If you've got less capital, uh, I think that really the best thing you can do is change your strategy a little bit so that you're looking for a different type of investment. So in other words, rather than, um, than trying to compete with, with, uh, with somebody for the home that they can always outbid you on. Um, you know, really, your idea is you want to pick up something for as close to opening bid as amount as possible. So if somebody wants that property so much you know, that they're always going to, to take it away, then that's okay. Sometimes we'll we'll bid on on four or five different things in an auction and have them all uh, you know lose them all. You know, or sometimes you'll win one. Um, either way, the idea is to buy it well. You know, so when you do buy make sure that it is at the price that's this reasonable that you know you're you're uh, you're doing well with it because this is tax sale investing and there's no reason to pay too much you know there's no reason to uh to pay 
uh, what sometimes we'll see different people pay for things, um, you know, on online uh, when there's so many other good opportunities around you. So if you were looking to uh, to engage in in tax sales, it, I mean, I guess it, okay. If 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 I was in the exact same position, what would I be after? And I think the best thing that you could go after would be some of these opportunities in inexpensive tax deeds, you know, or tax deeds that cost less. Good opportunities to go out there and to find land that you can buy and that uh, that you can turn around and sell. There's great opportunities in that that uh, that wouldn't require the same type of work that uh, that other investing might. Um, yeah, I guess there's more than uh, more than than one way to skin a cat. I guess they you know they'd say there's more than one way to uh, to get to your objective with this. I think, and um, it may yeah, not be if, through through an auction. Yeah, and if it was just through you know depending on if your investment strategy is liens or deeds, you know you can find inexpensive tax liens and inexpensive tax deeds. Uh, you know we could probably go on the internet right now and go to one of these counties and find some great. Uh, you know, over the counters, and really, one thing you know, it, kind of to piggyback what Shade said, that I'd recommend if somebody does, is is have limited you know capital to get started with, uh, then then you're just going to have to do a little bit more research. You're gonna you're gonna find that diamond in the rough, and and a lot of times you can find kind of a, a county honey hole where you can keep going back to this county and acquiring properties from this county. We have some students that. We'll find a particular county that's successful and they're able to pick up property there through some over-the-counter list and they'll just continue going back to that county uh, and, and repurchasing properties and selling them for a profit there. Uh, so there's always, you know, just like Shade said, there's a lot of different strategies that you can utilize to, to accomplish whatever your end goal is. You know, um, another good follow-up question to, uh, to the last one was, um, you know, is, uh, is it true that uh, that over-the-counter tax liens or deeds are not good ones, so um, it is uh, uh, kind of like the leftover. I think uh, so. It's left for over-the-counter. In other words, um, are they are they the, are they the ones like the leftovers, or were they not good? Were they the ones you know that were kind of uh, that were that were tossed aside? And um, let me give you an idea of um, different reasons that that a property may end up over-the-counter because you might be surprised. Now. Could it be that a property gets overlooked um, and that it's not good, and it goes into the over-the-counter pile? That it goes, you know, back on the books. Yeah, sure, it's possible. You're going to find properties like that. But at the same time, though, some counties sell thousands, sometimes uh, many thousands of liens all at once, and they may not have enough investors even there to buy them all. Um, investors like to focus on certain types of properties and ignore lots of other types of properties so it, it oftentimes depends on what types of properties you're looking at but I would say no there's definitely lots of good opportunities um, everywhere yeah definitely I mean that's one of the great strategies about over-the-counter is that there is going to be good opportunities let's say that you're looking at a, a tax sell list and and let's say there's 90 percent of them is junk so th there is going to be those properties that, are, that were left there for a reason. But there's also going to be properties that are good properties that, just like Shade said, they didn't have enough money at the auction. We've seen auctions where the bidding was very competitive for the first half of the auction, and all the properties that were purchased at the last half of the auction went for minimum bids, and lots of them didn't even get purchased because the investors had already spent their money. So there's a lot of different reasons why there could be over-the-counters, but that doesn't mean that they're all going to be bad. In fact, many times you're going to find some very incredible properties, some of the best properties uh, on over-the-counter. We could show you example of, after example of every kind of tax lien and tax deed that's available uh, through over-the-counter. We've been looking this week at uh, over-the-counter single-family homes, commercial lots, building lots, commercial properties. So really it's just a matter of, of finding the, the right property. So you may dig through a little bit of junk to find that good one, but that's really what being an investor is, is finding those ones that are going to be a good investment and, and then purchasing those ones. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Definitely uh, there are great opportunities in over-the-counter investing. It all depends on where you're looking and uh, and uh, like I said, what you're looking for. But we find the stuff all the time, great opportunities, uh, just about everywhere, just about everywhere that we look. 
So uh, definitely yes on that. And another question was, do all counties offer over-the-counter? Um, and the answer to that is no, they don't all offer over-the-counter. Some counties are, uh, they are not able to do it because of state law. In other words, state law may prevent them from uh, turning around and, and selling something like a uh, tax deed over-the-counter in some cases. In some cases, they just don't do it. A lot of counties may hold subsequent sales. They'll just hold many subsequent sales for properties that don't sell uh, at, a, at auction. Um, it, it's also a matter, I think, of uh, whether or not you're talking about liens or deeds uh, because they tend to get handled a little bit differently. Um, I don't know. What's your take on that, Steve? I, I would probably say about maybe 50 or 60 percent of, of counties will hold, will have over-the-counter. So maybe maybe it's higher than that. But there's going to be some counties that don't. There's going to be some counties that offer that sell a lot of their liens or deeds at auction. And there'll be some counties that don't have very many lists. But then there will also be other counties that have you know, thousands of properties available. And so it's just really going to depend on the individual county, but we have, you know, all of the over-the-counter list on our website for all of the different areas that will offer those those over-the-counters. Yeah. You know, the uh, the last uh, the last buying method that we mentioned before was secondary. And some of you may know what that is. Some of you may not. Um, it is a buying method that hasn't well, it's been around for a while, but it hasn't necessarily been available to uh, the average investor uh, until more recently. And what we're talking about here are secondary tax liens. You know, the question is, what if you could get all of the benefits of tax lien investing without all of the time and work, you know, to seek them out and find them and to go through the process of, you know, buying them? Um, you know, what if you could avoid all of that and still earn money with tax liens uh, and still have their same, you know, degree of of security and still be able to earn you know, returns of 10 plus percent. And that's kind of what we're talking about with uh, with secondary tax liens. If you want, Steve, you can go ahead and tell them about um, about secondary tax liens. I think you can probably explain it better than me. Oh, yeah, no problem. I mean, essentially what's, what secondary or these bank-owned tax liens are is uh, large banks, um, Wells Fargo, others, have been investing in tax liens for, for since we first got started, really for decades. And so what these, these big investors will do, and you used to see this a lot of times at the, at the live auctions, is, is they would come in with 50 different employees there to bid at all the tax liens at the auction. And so they would come in and they would spend $10 million or $5 million, in, even in a particular cell you know, three or four or five million dollars just in one of these big huge Florida sales or an Arizona sale or something like that, one of these tax lien sales, and they buy huge batches of tax lien certificates. In fact, there's some places in the country that will only sell their tax liens to one of these large, these large private, uh, you know, one of these large uh, private investors, one of these hedge funds or banks. And so uh, what has happened is these tax liens, these banks, they purchase these large portfolios of tax liens, but they don't necessarily, uh, you know, what they're after what they're after is the interest. They aren't necessarily after the property. And so what they'll do is they'll hold on to these tax liens until they get at the end of the redemption period. So usually about 90% of the tax liens that these banks will, will buy will go ahead and be redeemed, meaning that their bank's going to get back their money and they're going to get back their interest just like you and me would if we invested in that tax lien. But this 10%, uh, this remaining group of tax liens that didn't sell, all of these tax liens are essentially foreclosure ready. And so what we're able to do is we're able to go in there and purchase these secondary liens. So these are tax liens that have already been purchased from the county. Really what a secondary lien is, is uh, or buying a secondary investment, is just buying in a tax lien or deed that wasn't purchased through the county. So you're buying this lien or deed either through a, a another investor or through a company or in our case we're buying these from these large banks and institutions. Um, also, just uh, uh, to cover a couple of different things here uh, and, and to help make sense of it. Um, first off, one of the questions we had, um, I think it was related to when we were talking about tax deeds and the properties. And the question was, you know, will visiting the, uh, the actual property be considered as one of, uh, one of the important parts of due diligence? And the answer to that actually depends on the type of investment that you're going after. Um, for instance, if you're buying something like, let's say, a home, 
okay, and uh, and you're spending uh, you're spending a lot, then you definitely want to have uh, somebody lay eyes on the property so that you can get some idea of what the condition on the property is. But let's say that you're just dealing with land. Well, if you're just dealing with land, then the need to 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 see the property in person suddenly becomes less important with some of the tools that we have available today. Uh, just getting a picture of the property in many cases is enough. So uh, as far as actually visiting it, you don't physically have to be there yourself either because uh, you know visiting the, the property doesn't necessarily have to be you, in other words. And part of the reason why this is, uh, is again, as a matter of expense, I mean, if you wanted, you could travel out to uh, to the place and do all your, your due diligence research, but you don't have to do that anymore. There are cheaper ways that you can do it. So there are ways you could have somebody take some images of the property that uh, that they could send over to you so that they're new, so that you still uh, know uh, about what the current condition of the property is. Uh, and then most of the other research you're going to do is stuff you can do online. So uh, you don't actually necessarily have to uh, travel out there, but it's always going to be a good idea to have somebody lay eyes on the property if, if it's something like a structure. But with land, though, it's a little bit different story. You know, with then I think you can you can get by with less because usually you're talking about a smaller investment amount, and land you're not, you don't have the same types of concerns that you'll have with uh, with other types of, of properties, uh, something with improvements. Yeah, I mean, with our students, uh, you know, with our members that we we kind of teach a couple of different strategies. But Shade's exactly right. I mean, when you're looking at a structured property, then it's important to have a current photo of the property to make your evaluation. Somebody it, view eyes on the property. But just like Shade said, we teach strategies that that you don't have to do that yourself. But when it comes to something like a, a lot or a building lot. Um, you know, really, kind of the rule is is just depending on how much you're going to spend. It's going to kind of be a personal decision. So, for example, if me and Shade are, are buying tax deeds uh, for you know a hundred to five hundred dollars each, that we're turning around and selling online for three grand or four grand or to property owners in that area, then we're we're probably not going to go out there and and you know make sure that we have a current view of the property if we can if it's a, an average building lot we kind of know what it is but if it's a structure or anything like that you know that's going to be very very helpful in fact we just kind of thought of a or looked at a new strategy this week that uh, it's kind of off the point but uh, you know researching having a drone actually go in and, and look at the property and see if you can get a, a little bit better idea of the condition but when we're talking about tax deeds we really have to do the evaluation on what we see we're not going to be able to go into these properties or, or you know, uh, get keys into the properties until after we acquired. In fact, we're not going to get keys. We're going to have to, uh, essentially, in most cases, we're going to have to have a locksmith or somebody like that go up in the property for us. But, um, you know, that would kind of be, I guess, the question, the answer to the. Yeah. Well, and and the other thing is is that price dictates everything, you know, when it comes to this. So, uh, you know, that might sound crazy. You know, let's say buying a home that you can't have the keys with, or something. You know that you have to relock. You know, you have to get the uh, the doors, uh, you know, rekeyed. Uh, but when you're talking about buying these properties, you're talking about buying them as as a wholesaler. I mean, you're basically picking them up for the absolute lowest uh, amount of any investor. There's not an investor that will be closer to the uh, the purchase here than you. You know, you're the first one in the line here, so you can decide what you want to do with the property. But at the same time, these are valuable pieces of property. And you simply know the cheapest way to buy them. That's really what this comes down to. Um, when we're talking about secondary tax liens and we're talking about the foreclosure readiness of them, um, we just wanted everyone to kind of understand here uh, the way that tax liens work in general. When you have a tax lien, the lien becomes more valuable the longer you hold on to it. Okay, so if you bought this lien for a thousand dollars. And you are earning 18% annually on this lien, then the value of the lien is going up every single month as that interest accrues. So every single month, you know, you can add that one and a half percent, so that after a year, it has accrued $180 in additional interest. That's the 18% of that $1,000. That is known as the redemptive value of the lien. Okay, so if it's sold, you know, I mean, at one year, if it hadn't redeemed yet, the redemptive value of the lien would be one thousand one hundred and eighty dollars because that's the amount that it will redeem for because that's the amount that's owed. 
okay? Uh, and uh, that basically just kind of continues on. Uh, you know, if we're looking at tax liens that have a, uh, like a two-year redemption period, then yeah, you're looking at a tax lien that has two years worth of, worth of interest, okay? So it means that there is 36% interest. So uh, when this lien redeems, it will redeem for $1,360, okay? If, I, if that makes sense here. Um, so when we're looking at the foreclosure readiness side of it, um, one of the benefits of, uh, of that, of, of looking at these, uh, these secondary tax liens and them being foreclosure ready is even when you file for foreclosure, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that the property is going to end up going to foreclosure, okay? Um, what we're looking at with these properties uh, gives them a higher chance of going to foreclosure because they're properties that have already passed the, you know, they're, they've, uh, they're close to or past the set redemption period. So they've already gone longer uh, and are eligible now for that foreclosure process. But again, once you start that process of foreclosing on the properties, that's when many properties end up redeeming. Um, there's also benefits to actually going through the process uh, of initiating foreclosure, which um, we like to do with uh, like Florida, for instance, because in Florida, the county basically does all the work for you. All you have to do is tell them when to start. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, what, what makes an advantage of these secondary tax liens is that you're able, that we're able to go out there and, and make it, purchases from the banks or essentially make bids on behalf of our investors uh, to these banks to purchase bulks, uh, to purchase this portfolio of tax lien certificates. So that gives the investor the ability to purchase tax liens. And the re one of the reasons we particularly look in Florida is because that gives you the ability to essentially have the county do the foreclosure for you. Uh, you know, fill out, fill out what's called a deed application, do the foreclosure process. And what that does is that goes ahead and puts that tax lien certificate into a foreclosure cell. Now, what that means is that means that we're going to make back your, you're going to make back your money or I'm going to make back my money if I invest in this tax lien, usually within three to six months. That's usually how long the foreclosure process takes. In addition with that, we're also going to be guaranteed an 18% interest rate. So we can go in and purchase these Class A tax liens or Class B tax liens that maybe have been bid down to a little bit lower interest rate. You know how that we've seen these banks buy these interest buy these tax liens down to a low interest rate. Well, that's not going to matter to us if we're going to foreclose on it immediately, because once we foreclose on it, we're going to have to pay off any of those other delinquent taxes, and essentially. At that point, we're going to be making 18% interest rate off of our entire investment. So it gives the a, a property owner the ability to make an investment, and get a return on their investment in uh, you know four to six months, uh, you know earning 18%, and then be able to just continue redoing that. And then of course, uh, you know you always have the chance of getting in property as well. Awesome. Well. Uh... You know the uh, the foreclosure side of it. When when you uh, when you do go through and initiate that process, yeah, you know, like Steve said, there's a lot of power right there in uh, in in that pro uh, you know in just the uh, the act of foreclosing. And part of the reason why we believe in tax sales so much is because we believe in that foreclosure. You know that foreclosure is um, the most powerful foreclosure. It's the most powerful foreclosure that the state has. And so it's really a benefit to us. It's something that we count on. Uh, you know, we uh, we like the fact that uh, that it's there. I mean, it's what protects us as investors. And if we end up acquiring the property, it's what guarantees that the property is going to be ours. You know, that they'll be able to transfer ownership. That'll be ours. It won't have anything else attached to the property. Uh, it's because of that uh, that power. So, um, the foreclosure ready nature, though, of the tax liens you're buying there uh, is uh, is one of the strategies that you can employ with uh, with with secondary liens. Um, you know, or if you had a lien that's, let's say, that you bought one that was already earning a high interest rate return, you could hang on to it, you know, and uh, and wait for it to uh, to redeem. If it's already earning a high interest rate return, uh, then uh, that's essentially what you're after anyway. And so, um, to to invest into secondary tax liens, though, I think the main point and the reason why it works out so well is for its simplicity, and that is it's designed specifically for people that don't have a lot of time to spend uh, researching all of the stuff with tax sales and, and trying to, to uh, you know, participate in the auctions. 
Secondary tax lien investing works really well for the person that wants those advantages and the benefits of tax lien. So they want an interest rate return of 9, 10%, 11% on a safe investment. You can even earn more than that with uh, with these, uh, you know, as, as we've mentioned. But ultimately though, uh, it's the ease of the process, and that is in large part due to uh, due to our portfolio manager uh, Mark Blair and uh, and and the role that he plays in it. Uh, if you want, you can tell them a little bit about how it all works here. Once um, you know, with the members that we have here that work with them already. Yeah, I mean, essentially, what what we're able to do is is Mark is able to get an idea of of uh, you know what you're working with, what your goals are, and we're able to essentially go out there and, and find some good tax and certificates to put together a portfolio um, that'll essentially be exactly what you're looking for. And so uh, what we're able to do is you can let us know uh, and we're able to go ahead and uh, schedule this appointment with Mark. And, and usually when we're making offers of um, you know it, on these portfolios, in the future, we're going to have the ability on our website to just purchase these secondary liens directly off our website. But right now, as we're working with these port uh, with these banks and offering, uh, um, essentially making offers on these portfolios, usually most of the students that we work with are usually going to need around four or five thousand dollars for us to be able to make an offer on one of the portfolios to one of these banks. Um, but at that point, you know, Mark's going to find out exactly what you're looking to do and then we'll be able to go ahead and put together a portfolio for you uh, and then once those tax liens are transferred in your name, he's also going to help you through the foreclosure process. So he's going to, you know, help you go through and uh, uh, do the deed applications and get those started and get these properties in the foreclosure process and essentially help you throughout that entire time frame. I mean, really what we want to be able to do with this secondary or with these bank don't tax liens is help investors purchase tax and certificates and always be able to continue reinvesting. So you'll have tax liens that maybe pay off before or they even finish the foreclosure, so they pay after three months, you can automatically we put that tax lien certificate into another tax lien and continue earning the interest rate return so that your money is never essentially uh, you know, in limbo. <laughs> One big problem in the past is you could purchase tax liens, uh, but then if you redeemed early, you'd have to wait till the next sale before you could purchase another tax lien. Uh, with secondaries, it gives you the ability to purchase these tax liens also because we're purchasing these tax liens, we're, we're trying to purchase them or we're offering these tax liens at a discount, which means that you're able to get the tax lien for uh, the redemption amount or less. So if we're able to get any additional discount, we pass that on to the investor. So there's chances where you could purchase tax liens and you already uh, have some interest on that tax lien before you even purchased it. Yeah, which is ideal. Um, you know, you won't find um, a lot of opportunities like that. Also, you know, secondary tax liens uh, are something that uh, I don't know that you would want to get necessarily just anywhere. And, and the reason I say that is one of the things that we're good at is uh, we're good at researching investments, we're good at analyzing liens and deeds, and we're good at picking them out. And so one of the things I think that we offer is that we actually care about our people and, and we want them to make money, we want them to be successful and everything we do is to help that process along. So when we go to pick out uh, you know, secondary liens, we try to pick out the liens we think are going to work out best. You know, we try to pick out the liens that, uh, that, that are going to offer uh, the most profitability. And the reality of it is I don't know that everybody out there in the world is going to do that. You know, um, you, know I, you, you wish you could say that they would, but you know how people are and how it is with money. So I think that's one of the things that we can offer people as well is uh, that uh, that we do care about their overall success. Like Steve mentioned before, we have a lot of success stories and we have a lot of success stories because, uh, you know, I think because we care, because we care about it, we want to make it simple for people, we want to answer questions, we just want to see people do well with it, um, which uh, is ultimately, you know, what matters to us. So. Um, you know, definitely. I mean, you know, any investment that we recommend to you would be a, a, a investment that we would recommend to ourselves, that we would purchase ourselves. So there's nothing that, you know, we would say, oh, yeah, that's something that I would invest in that I wouldn't invest in or that I wouldn't recommend my, my family to invest into. Uh, and, and I think that's really kind of what sets us apart. In fact, with secondary liens in particular, uh, we had company after company uh, who uh, over the years, over the 
10, 12 years we've done seminars that, you know, wanted to offer secondary liens to our students. And every time we looked into it, they were essentially offering what me and Shay consider to be junk or toxic tax liens or just not that great of investments. And so when we did, you know, created and put helped put together this secondary strategy or these banked owned strategy, we essentially were that was our goal in mind is is we need to make sure that these tax liens are, you know, grade A, grade B uh, uh, type tax lien certificates, uh, high quality tax liens that we could that we would be tax liens that we'd invest in ourselves. I mean, it doesn't do us any good to, uh, to help you purchase tax liens and you not make money on it. We want to be able to help you purchase tax liens and then go out there and purchase tax liens over and over again, uh, so that you just continue able to build whatever income that you're looking for, or your retirement account, or really just kind of depending on you know, the individual investor's desire. Yeah. Now, I think whatever your investment strategy is, or whatever it is that you're after, you know, whether it's tax liens, tax deeds, or redemption deeds, and whatever your buying method might be, if what you want to do is is make money with this, if what you want to do is start investing into liens or deeds, uh, then what you should do if you're not already a member with with tax sale support is join the website, join uh, uh, join basically tax sale support, which includes a number of things. It, you know, not only are you going to have access to the website, but it also includes a port, you know, access to our portfolio manager, um, the portfolio support. You know, something to keep in mind is that um, yeah, the portfolio manager also wants to work with the same individuals over and over again. And so um, you know, yeah, that's something also that, that's different. I think you'll find um, you know, it's part of the reason why, why, we, why we enjoy working with that uh, with Mark is because he legitimately cares as well. He wants to have people making money, and and uh, and uh, he wants to be able to work with people long term. So, uh, th I think it makes for better opportunities there. Um, you're also going to have access to all of the tax sale lists that we have, which uh, are a lot. We have all of those different types of lists, whether it's online, whether it's over the counter, uh, whether it's for live auctions. Um, we have all of them. Uh, it's also access to us for investment support so people ask us about investments all the time uh, and uh, also the access to other types of trainings that we do like access to uh, to we do three-day uh, workshops in Las Vegas now so we can work with people uh, you know in small groups uh, so we can work with them more closely so um, you know, I think that uh, there's a lot there for uh, for people. I mean, there's obviously so much more than that. There's so much training materials, and there's so many different things uh, that uh, that we can include that are included with uh, with membership because it's so much more than uh, than just that. Um, but that's really where it begins, and that's where we can uh, where we can start to help you. You know, narrow down where you're going to get started and uh, and and how to best help you. By the way, there will be a, a replay available. Um, I just wanted to get that out. We'll uh, we'll have that available here. We'll get out working on that tonight. So if uh, if anybody has any questions here, uh, we know we've gone kind of long here tonight. Um, but yeah, on what it includes, you know, let us know. Uh, you know, we'd be uh, we'd be happy to uh, to uh, to answer any questions here on it. And uh, I think going to tax sale support is probably the easiest way to sign up. Yeah, and, and what we can do is we can send out an email afterwards. Uh, we'll, we'll include some special offers for you as well, some of our ebooks and things like that that you can download, and maybe a couple of lists and stuff. Uh, and we can also set up if if you have questions before you want to sign up for any reason, you can always uh, set up a strategy call. Uh, so I'll go ahead and send out a special link to this group to set up a strategy call where we'll give you a call. Uh, spend uh, 15, 20 minutes with you and get you pointed in the right direction. Well, kind of, ex really, what it is is called a strategy and investor profile recommendation. So what we do is we'll talk with you, get an idea of where you're at, and then we can give you an investor profile recommendation. Me and Shade have put together uh, eight different investor profile types that will essentially help narrow down your strategy and help you pick a, a, a great area or the right area to get started with. So, uh, you know, definitely, if you have any questions, if if, if you're interested about tax lien and deed investing. I don't think you're going to find another resource out there that's going to be as committed to you and that's going to be able to offer you the same type of value. I, I, if you can find one, let me know. I'll give you a 30-day gift certificate uh, to tax sell support. We will because you're not going to find one. Uh, you know what we're offering here is essentially uh, you know a, a great program uh, to help people, investors, go out there and get started doing tax liens and deeds, and your success is our success. That's the reason that we're doing it.
business. Yeah. Yeah, I think I agree completely. Yeah, and definitely keep an eye out for the uh, for the special offer. I think we've got a lot of people that have stayed with us uh, throughout this whole webinar. We'll see if we can get a special offer out to, uh, to everybody that attended as a way to say thank you for uh, for doing so. So, yeah, we uh, we do appreciate everybody. Thank you guys and have a great evening. All right. We'll see you later.